This is the new BMW 7 Series. No, it's not a concept car or a design study. This is actually what it looks like. The design isn't the only shocking thing about the new 7 Series. You'll also be able to get a pure electric version called the i7. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about these next generation BMW luxury cars. Buy, sell, car, wow. Okay, I admit it, I'm finally getting used to BMW's massive grills, but I wasn't ready for the new 7 Series double headlight design. It looks pretty similar to the new X7. There are thin daytime running lights at the top and the main beams are underneath behind dark plastic lenses. I actually think this new design suits the car. It doesn't look as aggressive as the old 7 Series, but it doesn't look all bulbous like a Mercedes EQS either. It's a similar story at the side. The new 7 Series and i7 are more rounded than the old car, but they're still much boxier than the EQS. You can tell BMW was going for a simpler design for this new 7th generation car. The old car's chrome hockey stick trim has gone. Now you get a simple crease, some flush door handles and a bit of blue trim on the i7. You get some new wheels too. Entry level cars come with 19 inch alloys as standard, which will be too small, but you can pay extra to get 20, 21 or yes, this is more like it, 22 inch wheels instead. The new car also has a more angular window frame design than before with a noticeable Hofmeister kink. That's the sharp bend at the back for all you non-BMW nerds. Speaking of the back, the new 7 Series has a much less fussy rear end than the old car. The one piece light bar is gone. It actually looks a little bit more old fashioned. But what do you think? Do you like the look of the new 7 Series and the i7 or would you rather have a Mercedes S-Class or an EQS? Let me know by voting in the pinned comment below this video. The big news on the inside of the 7 Series and i7 is that the cars get BMW's curved widescreen infotainment system. Okay, so I know you can get this on the new i4 and iX, but the 7 Series and i7 get a new augmented reality satellite navigation system like you've been able to get in the Mercedes A-Class even for quite some time. Anyhow, BMW has also given the 7 Series and i7 a new minimalist dashboard with hidden air vents and a neat two-spoke steering wheel with a flat base. There are also some new touch-sensitive buttons under the crystal effect panels on the dashboard and doors. Now these look great and they let you adjust the climate controls and heated seats without using any fiddly on-screen menus. The new 7 Series and i7 aren't just filled with technology, they're packing some very posh materials too. You can get oak and ash wood trims, stainless steel speaker grills, crystal glass controls, carbon fibre bits and even cashmere seat fabric. And on top of all that, quite literally, you get a massive panoramic glass roof with built-in mood lit panels. It's one thing to have a massive touchscreen in the front of a car, but what about if you like to be chauffeured around in the back? Well, BMW has come up with the theatre screen. It's a huge 31-inch 8K display that folds down from the roof and stretches all the way across the back seats. It has a built-in 5G internet connection with Amazon Fire TV, so you can stream movies and make video calls on the move. You can control it using touchscreen menus or with a dedicated 6-inch touchscreen that's built into the rear doors. Your movies should sound as good as they look because the 7 Series comes with Bowers & Wilkins stereo system with up to 36 speakers. These also play sound effects composed by Hans Zimmer when you activate the theatre screen and extend the rear sunblinds. You can also get the 7 Series and i7 with executive lounge seating if you'd rather have a nap than watch the movies. This lets you recline the back seats by more than 42 degrees and comes with a footrest that pops out from behind the front seat. From launch, there'll be just one version of the i7 the xDrive 60. It has a 102 kilowatt hour battery that gives you up to 388 miles of range. That's around 50 miles less than you get in a Tesla Model S and about 65 miles less than claimed by Mercedes EQS 450+. Plus. The i7 is capable of up to 195 kilowatt fast charging and you can add an extra 106 miles of range in about 10 minutes. The i7 60 comes with dual motors that produce 544 horsepower combined. That's about 20 horsepower more than you get with the Mercedes EQS 580. This means that the BMW will do 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds, which is a few tenths of a second slower than the Mercedes though. Hmm, that'll do it in 4.3 seconds. So why is the BMW more powerful yet slower? Um, I think there's a marketing reason for this. You see, BMW has confirmed that it'll build a much quicker i7 M70, and that'll have 660 horsepower on 1,000 newton meters of torque, making it the most powerful BMW road car ever. 
Now that car will be able to do 0-60 in around three and a half to four seconds, and it'll arrive later in 2023. If you're not ready to make the switch to electric cars, then maybe you should stick with the normal BMW 7 Series, and that will come with six different petrol and diesel engines. They're all mated to an eight-speed automatic gearbox and some form of hybridization system. Rear-wheel drive 735i models use a turbocharged three-liter six-cylinder engine and a mild hybrid system to produce a combined 286 horsepower. There's also a more powerful rear-wheel drive 740i with 380 horsepower. If you need even more grunt, there's a four-wheel drive 760i that uses a mild hybrid system and a twin-turbo 4.4-litre V8 to make 544 horsepower. Fortunately, none of these cars will go on sale in Europe. Instead, here, the 7 Series range kicks off with the four-wheel drive 740D. This has a twin-turbo 3-litre straight-six diesel with a mild hybrid system and 300 horsepower. It'll do 0-60 in 6.3 seconds. If that's not fast enough, though, there's a four-wheel drive 750e hybrid which uses a 310 horsepower 3 litre straight six petrol engine and a 200 horsepower electric motor to produce a combined 490 horsepower and 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds. Still not quick enough? Then you'll want the four-wheel drive M760e hybrid. This uses the 380 horsepower petrol engine from the 740i and adds the 200 horsepower electric motor from the 750e to make a combined 571 horsepower, which is good for 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. But if you just want to tootle around on electric power alone, the M760e and 750e both can drive for around 50 miles on electric power alone. BMW has revealed the new 7 Series and i7 side-by-side -side for a reason. They're built using lots of shared parts. If you put the two car chassis side-by-side -side without the engine, motors or batteries, they'd look almost identical. It's very similar to how BMW turned the 4 Series Grand Coupe into the i4 electric car. This is completely different from what Mercedes did when it made the S-Class and EQS. Those were designed to be completely separate from day one, so they don't share any major parts. The new 7 Series and i7 will only come as long wheelbase models. This means you'll get absolutely loads of legroom in the back, whether you like it or not. The new cars are actually 1cm longer and almost 5cm wider and more than 5cm taller than the old long wheelbase 7 Series, so they're pretty massive. Petrol and diesel versions have 25 litres more boot space than the old cars too, and plug-in hybrid models are even better. They store their batteries under the floor, just like the i7 electric car. This frees up 105 litres of space in the back compared to the old plug-in hybrid models, which kept their batteries in the boot. Every new BMW 7 Series and i7 gets adaptive self-leveling air suspension as standard. This can lower the car by 10mm at speed to help reduce drag, or raise it by 20mm so you don't scrape the bumper on steep driveways or speed humps. You can also pay extra to get the new 7 Series with rear wheel steering. This turns the rear wheels by up to 3.5 degrees to make the car more manoeuvrable in town, and it'll turn them in the same direction as the front wheels to make it more stable on motorways. There's also an optional active body control system, which uses the standard air suspension and some extra electric motors fitted into the anti-roll bars to stop the car's body leaning in tight corners. It can also disconnect the anti-roll system when you're cruising to help the suspension deal with small bumps and vibrations more comfortably. The BMW 7 Series and i7 come with loads of driver assistance features, including a new adaptive cruise control that works up to 130 miles an hour. This can accelerate, steer, brake and change lanes for you and use GPS to know when to slow down for corners, junctions and slip roads. It can even slow down in built-up areas, adjust its speed when it sees a speed limit sign and automatically stop at red traffic lights. The car even lets drivers in the USA take their hands off the wheel completely at speeds of up to 81 miles an hour. The new BMW i7 will go on sale first, arriving at dealers in November 2022. The i7 xDrive 60 in excellence trim will cost just over £107,000, while M Sport versions will set you back almost £112,000. Meanwhile, petrol and diesel plug-in versions of the 7 Series will arrive a bit later, in spring 2023. BMW hasn't confirmed how much they'll cost, but they'll probably start from around £80,000. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know some other videos you'd like to see. And click on those windows there to watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can get a car wire. And we will help you sell your car. Just upload some photos, give a brief description. And our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a great price for it. Thanks for watching.